Hi, Tom Kubinick, President and CEO of Secure Tactical. We're here at Gunsight Academy for our first fire event. And I've got the opportunity to sit down with Ken Campbell and really, I want to learn a little more about Gunsight. This is my first time here. Um, I've heard, you know, in my world, I've heard more people talk about coming here. And it's been one of those things in the back of my mind saying, yeah, someday I got to get out there. Yeah. And now we've got the opportunity to come out. It's been a beautiful day. We've got um, quite a group of young ladies shooting today, um, the level of enthusiasm and excitement is, uh, it was just a buzz this morning. So tell me a little bit about, you know, walk me through the history of gun sex. I know you guys, you were the first? Well, first, you, you got a lot on my plate here just to start <laughs> with, but that's okay. I'm an old elected official. I can, I can multitask there. Um, first off, welcome to gun sight. And the key thing you said this was your first time here, which means you'll be back. And I, and I talk about that. Yep. In my prior life as a county sheriff, I talk about recidivism. Yep. And if I spoke about inmates coming back to jail at a high rate, that was not good for my reelections. Right. However, you coming back here as a recidivist, and I'm not thinking of you as a jail inmate yet, Tom, no. um, <laughs> but, but we have a very high return rate of our clients. But anyway, impossibly blue skies, marshmallow clouds, you can't ask for much better weather, weather than this to no. get outside and, and shoot. But Gunsight is the world's oldest and the world's largest privately owned firearms training academy. We're over 47 years old. Uh, the legendary Jeff Cooper and his wife Janelle uh, founded uh, Gunsight, opened the doors in 1976, and we've gone strong ever since. Currently, Gunsight is owned by uh, Buzz and Sonia Mills, right. uh, wonderful, wonderful people, and, and they keep Gunsight going, and, and uh, we can talk about it uh, here in a bit, but you've seen all the construction as you came in of the new buildings and so on. But Gunsight's been here for 47 years. We teach everybody from you to a little old lady who's a door greeter at Walmart to yep. the CIA to celebrities. Uh, Tom Selleck's never been shy about it. Tom Selleck's a multiple gun sight grad. Right. If you watch on, uh, we watch for these things. Yeah. On the Jesse Stone series, the 1911 pistol he shot is a gun sight pistol. Okay. And we okay. take personal pride in that. But we, but, our, but our, uh, we teach special forces, uh, the, the different specialty teams right. in three, di three letter federal agencies yeah, agency and so guys. on. Yeah. Um, but our bread and butter is you. Is right. Earth people. Right. That's who our bread and butter is. We we keep good Americans alive, and uh, we're very proud of that. Now, do you see a change right now? I mean, with the current, you know, political, uh, whatever you want to call it, the current environment. Do you see a change in the people coming to a Absolutely. to a lot more first time shooters? Because I see in my world, we see I I've got a lot of liberal family members, and and they're all talking to me about. Guns. First, what first, can I do to yeah, take care of yeah, myself? Yeah. What's what? What do you recommend? And I tell them. I, I mean, I usually refer them to somebody. I always tell everybody is send them our way. Right. My expertise. <laughs> you know, my expertise ends when you pull the gun from my safe, fast access. That's where I end, and I got to rely on you. I rely on you guys to say, now go learn how to shoot. Here's what we're seeing, and we have for several years now. We've had seven record student years in a row. Even the COVID year was still a record, wow. um, and we are doing my numbers projection, I'm the CEO, um, we're going to beat last year already. We're going to beat it uh, based on my projections to year end this year. So what we're seeing with these new 10 million new gun owners mm -hmm. is uh, many, of them, many of them have listened to the Jeff Cooper's advice of just because you own a piano does not make you a musician. That's right. Well, they're seeking training and they're seeking training from us. But that changes things a little bit for us in how we do things. As opposed, as opposed to having uh, a class of 24 and 22 of them were gun owners, five or six of these, you know, 20% of the class is coming in and saying, can you teach me how to open this box and make this work? Yeah. And we can. And we're so glad to have those. But it, to the point that... At the end of March, uh, I'm starting a brand new class that's called Day Zero. And it's okay. the Sunday preceding our normal five-day, it's called a 250 pistol class. Right. It's very slow-paced. This is a gun. This is a trigger. This is the barrel. This is a revolver. This is a holster. These are different types of holsters. The whole morning is in the classroom. Then in the afternoon, 
we plan on shooting about 50 rounds because many of these folks have never shot on a firing line. Right. So guns going off left and right of them make them very nervous. So we're going to try to get them acclimated to that. So Monday, we cover that again on Monday, but we do it pretty quickly paced. Right. So it'll make that easier for them on Monday. So we're running the beta class uh, the end of March. I've got another one in April. Uh, and uh, I really have high hopes for this and making these folks more comfortable. And for our benefit, uh, we keep a one to four student to instructor ratio in a firing line. Good instructors can manage six. We think four is better. Well, if I've got four newbie shooters, I've got to dedicate more resources right, to them. Right. So this will make that easier also uh, for the instructor. So um, we have seen a change in it, it, but it's a great opportunity when a more liberal-minded person wants to come. It's an opportunity for us to make them realize, you know, we put our pants on the same way you do. Yeah. Um, and yes, the world may not be as pleasant a place as it once was or you mm -hmm. thought it was. And you're the first responder, right? I spent 35 years in law enforcement. Right. But you are the first responder. You're the one who's there when it happens to you and your family. And a good response time in law enforcement, five, six minutes, maybe 15 right. minutes, depending on where you are. So you have to be able to take care of yourself and your family until the cavalry can come arrive. Yep. So God bless you for coming out and realizing this, recognizing our Constitution, being able to purchase a firearm and now be able to go train with it. So when, not if, when it happens to you, you'll be prepared for that. It's, it's interesting. You, know, you, you hit on something about your, your st instructor-student ratio. One of the things that I've, I've heard every time people talk about gun sight, oh, yeah, and it talks about the facility, the different aspects of the fun, but it always comes back to the reason to go is gun sight has the best instructors. Thank you. And I've heard that from so many people. And, you know, I work in a lot of military groups doing in weapon storage, and we talk about these things, and they always come back and they say, it's the instructor. How do you guys get such good instructors? We're the oldest and the best. It's, it's just they, they, they come to you because... They come to, we don't, I don't have to go out and look for instructors. Right. It's very difficult to become an instructor here. That was my yeah. next question. Your, yeah. your vetting process is... That is, it is, it is very challenging. Okay. It's supposed to be. We're gun okay. sight. Right. Um, you don't just come in and say, this is who I am, and this, these are my bona fides. I want to come work for you. Right. Well, we have a process. You have to attend three or more graded classes. You have to excel in those classes with what's called a marksman one or an expert rating. Mm -hmm. You have to sufficiently impress a range master. Not all of our staff is range masters. We have right. range masters and coaches. A range master to put their name next to your name on a letter to me and say, mm -hmm. I think Tom would be a good fit. Well, if you, we've probably already recognized you. They've come right. to me and said, hey, I'm, I want you to come out and watch this guy. Mm -hmm. So we reach out to you and say, send us your CV. So we take a look at that. If we're still interested, then we contact you and we put you through an apprentice program. And it's sort of like the plumber's union. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't yeah. pay you. Right. right. We give you a place to stay. We give you a hat, an instructor shirt, and we partner you with range masters other than who sponsored you. Okay. And then it's kind of like a law enforcement field training officer program, FTO. You get a three ring binder. This, this, th these are all your responsibilities. So the range master works with you mm -hmm. and you understand what your goals and objectives are. And so do we, at any point we can say, Tom, this isn't working out. I'm sorry. Right. And we do that periodically uh, because we have a standard that, Right. That we must have. I, I want you to have the show with dinner, right? You get yeah. military guys. Well, these aren't troops we're training. Some of right. the serious law enforcement trainers who've come out of academies. These aren't cadets we're training. Right. These are good, good guys and gals. They're, they're earth people. Yeah. Now, safety drives everything we do, and we're going to be as stern as we have to be, including to the point of, we'll send you home if you're not safe. But if you can get the show with dinner, if you can have fun in a very serious topic, your learning curve is going to rocket. So our instructors have to have the knowledge of, of the firearms, the knowledge of the training, but they got to be able to, I don't want to use the term entertain, but it, it almost verges on that. Mm -hmm. It's like 
the salespeople for your company, they can walk in and talk facts, right. or they can walk in and right. sell your product. That's well. I was going to want to get to that point. I think you just hit on it. Is the the firearms proficiency is the easiest part of being an instructor. It's the ability to to gauge a room and a person yeah. and respond to them in a language and in a body posture that's Absolutely. not intimidating. Because let's face it, if you look at instruction across America, and I've been to a lot of different types of places and people, there's a lot of testosterone out there. There is. Some of it is misapplied. Some of it isn't. But it's the best instructors I've ever worked with are the ones that will have a kid, a lady, a girl, Rambo, and this this mix, and teach and when, them all. And when you're there, the 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 everybody's kind of compressed into like this. We're all the same, you know, and it's Correct. so seamless. And, and we'll get that where. Yeah. Uh, and and my, when I first came to Gunsight in 1990 as a dark haired deputy with the sheriff's office, um, I looked through the list of classes, and I was a SWAT commander. I was a firearms instructor. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'd been to Masada Yub, I'd been to Ray Chapman, I'd been to Smith & Wesson Academy. So I called out here and said, I don't need to start at this 250 level class, I need to start 350. Well, Jeff Cooper happened to be the one who answered the phone. Oh, that's fine. So I told him, this is who I am, these are my bona fides, this is where I need to be. And he said, nope, that's not the way we do things here. You'll start at 250. And he hung up. And I thought, well, you woke her much. <laughs> I came out for 250. And he was right. I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And in the course of my career following, I worked for some other folks, Louis Auerbach, Pat Rogers, and mm-hmm. so on. And the best instructors will tell you these high-speed, low-drag classes, you can never get too much of the basics. And the high-speed, low-drag is a mastery of the basics. Right. So if you come to Gunsight and you think, I don't need this basic class, or our basic class can take you from opening the box, or if you're already a competitive shooter, we will make you both better. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're teaching tactics also. It's not just when the target faces, you draw and fire rounds into a piece of paper. You're clearing live fire, clearing houses. You're live fire, clearing outdoor simulators. You're shooting at night with flashlights. When we get into the intermediate and advanced classes, you're clearing houses and the outdoor simulators at night. Again, live fire. Right. So um, our instructors have a unique skill set that uh, sends you out of here better. Well, it's when you try, when we're talking about the civilian side of things, is there anything that you guys can do to get people to, you know, because I do see, I, I don't like this, but I do see it is people get the instruction. And then they come home, they hit the range, and then they hit the range, and all of a sudden a week goes by, maybe, then two weeks. Next thing you know, it's been six months since they fired their gun. And that's one of the th- – I see this all the time. I talk to a lot of people saying, you know, as people within our, the community, what, you know, what can we do? It's like give somebody guitar lessons. If you don't practice, <laughs> you're not going to – not only that, but you It's gonna, a perishable you, skill. Yeah, it is a, it is a perishable – and perishable confidence too it's you come out of the school after five days and you're feeling very comfortable with a firearm on your side you put it away for six months and maybe you're not so comfortable you don't just put it away you put it away in your secure storage absolutely (laughs) but i'm wondering is is there are there things that 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 people can do to really in our textbook um Mm -hmm. that the student takes home we we have recommended drills that Mm -hmm. you can now some ranges won't allow you to draw from the holster you have to work from the table and so on and so on or maybe you go to uncle ned's farm and do your practice out there but we give you recommended drills and they aren't high round count right it doesn't we we also spend um a bit of time and and it's in your textbook how to dry practice you don't have to make the gun go boom yep to get good practice in, in a presentation, in, in pressing the trigger properly so your sights or your, pistol, your right. dot doesn't move. You can get good practice that way, and some of that can be 10 minutes a week. Yep. That's all it takes. In, in my prior life, um, I, I usually wore a uniform as mm-hmm. sheriff, but if there'd be a, t- a period of time where I'd have to wear a suit or I'd wear casual clothes, well, that was a different holster and rig. When I would go back to uniform, before I'd walk out the door that first day, I'd do, and we call it a number one, it's my first step, it's grip. Right, right. I would do 10 of those, releasing the security snap on my holster 
because I had to get in my head yeah. to different different holster, maybe a different gun. So it's easy to practice. But the onus is on you. It is. It, it's 100% on you, right. whether you're spending 50 rounds of ammo or just 10 minutes right. in, in your garage. You know, that's you know, one of the things we talk about in our fast access storage. It's always your, how you store firearms you know, defines your ability to access your firearms. So in, in our world of secure storage, you practice access just like you practice your draw. You dry fire access, meaning fast box under my bed. Every night for the first 30, 40 days, in the dark, I turn the lights off, I reach down, I open it, I've got it, I close it up. After 30 days, you know, muscle memory, now I go once a week. And I just, and not, at this point, I've had that thing down there. I might go a couple of weeks, I turn the light up, but all of a sudden, one night, I just kind of, I'm, I'm not dead nuts on it. I go, you know what? I go back to every day, and really slow and deliberate. Yeah. And because you're, you're building that, I'm trying to, I want to, you know, in our, you know, we bring firearm storage the performance side of guns is where we sit. The gun safe industry sits off to the side of the firearms performance side, meaning you do all your stuff, then you come home, go into the basement, lock it up. No, our solutions are part of your whole scenario. So yeah, we're yeah, always, your, your immediate solution is not in the basement. Right. It's, you know, it's, so we're always trying to come up with ways to get people to say, look, okay, in your front hall closet next to your door, you're going to have, if you've got your home decentralized storage, you have a cabinet there. Every morning, come down, get your coffee, just walk over, and just open the safe and close it, and do it without looking, and just but get in the habits sure. of, mo- so of, of you don't doing have to these. Think where it is. Right. It, it's a it's a conditioned response. Right. I'm wondering, you know, because again, you brought that up, and is the the dry fire skills are probably those skills are the most are the, are the most easiest ones to lose. I mean, I said marksmanship is not is not a difficult skill set for. For close range, but you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not a really good handgun shooter. I'm, I'm the first to say is, I'm a, I'm a rifle guy. Come spend a few days. Yeah, I will. I'm, I gotta. Talk, I gotta figure out a trip with my boys. I'm already. My gears are already turning. You, you will never regret that. And yeah. I've had my sons here. Yeah. Um, we have families come out. Uh, spring breaks coming mm-hmm. up. We've had grandpa yeah. and grandsons, father sons, mother daughters, father daughters, and so on. And it is such a tremendous bonding experience yeah. for families. Now, we also uh, are working on a program, and it's called Corporate Team Tactics. And it's not like you and I are working as a team, but your company wants oh, to okay. do a retreat. So you're going to do go do a golf retreat. You want bonding? You come shoot together. Oh, yeah. So yep. we make facilities available for you to have your company meeting so you can get your requisite boxes checked for all those tax advantages and so on right for your travel and and all that but then part of that is we're teaching you the shooting aspect of it and that and we have some companies that have done that continue to do it we've got one company that's in the automotive industry gosh they've been coming here 20 25 years and if i if i was at liberty to say the name everybody would recognize it because they are cross-country and how many people do they bring in for an event? Oh, about 15. Okay. Wow. And, and we'll build it for yeah. what you want. You don't have to have one of our classes. You call Dave Hartman, our training right. director, and say, this is kind of what I have in mind. This is mm-hmm. how much time. This is what we'd like to accomplish. And, and we'll build it for you and tailor it for you uh, based on uh, your needs and the skill sets of your folks. Right. You don't have to bring your own gun. We can rent you guns here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, when we were talking earlier about all these new gun owners. Yeah. People call say, what gun do I need to buy to come to class? I'm not a gun owner. Here's what I think you should do. Yeah. We have a lot of rental guns. Yep. For what we charge, I'm not getting rich off renting you a gun by the time I have it maintained and mm-hmm. cleaned and so on. So if a SIG 320 doesn't work for you today, I may put you in a Glock tomorrow or a Colt right. 1911 or whatever the case may be. So you can see. So then at the end of the week, mm-hmm. you go back to your local gun shop and you're an informed consumer. Right. And that way you're not basing your purchase on a guy that works solely for commission. I'll tell you what. I see it at the range, and I've seen people at the range with handguns that they truly oh. were afraid of. They, yeah. They're like, hey, could you shoot this? Could I mean, I've, I've, I've actually seen, like, or some very small frame person with a monster. I'm going like. I, I've seen this, yeah. and, and it just it's embarrassing to me where yeah. they'll. 
oh, little lady, this is what you need. And yeah. they sell them a two inch yeah. 38 air weight or a 357 air weight. And you go shoot 50 rounds out of it there, big fella, mm -hmm. and let me know how your hand feels. Well, it's, so uh, they shoot a couple rounds, and now it does hurt because physics happens, yep. right? It just does. Or you, you see the videos where people will put a big bore handgun or rifle or shotgun in somebody's hands, and they'll shoot it, and it knocks them back, and everybody laughs. That's not funny. No. You just spoiled that shooter. Right. And that's not what it is. Start them out with a twenty two. Yeah. And work your way up so they can build confidence and realize, gosh, I can do this. And, oh, my gosh, this is fun. And then they'll practice. No, ab absolutely. I, yeah, I'm not a uh, – I like full frame. I like big – I don't shoot a lot of handguns. But when I do, I'm much more comfortable. And it's easier for me to shoot yeah. a larger frame gun. When we teach people, when they yeah. come, some of, we strongly – do not recommend bringing a subcompact, right. a SIG 365, uh, mm -hmm. e even a, a, a Smith & Wesson Shield. They're great guns, but when you want to learn, you're better learning with a full-size gun. Mm -hmm. There's more mass to it, so there's yeah. less perceived recoil. The barrels are, uh, the sight radius is longer. Right. Um, if you're less apt to be able to inadvertently put your hand over the end of the muzzle, different things <laughs> like that. So we strongly recommend the full-size or mid-size guns. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to sell you guns. I'm just trying to make your learning. Right. All the principles you learn will work with a subcompact. Correct. But why be right. more challenging right. when you do it? Do you, it's inversely proportional to a motorcycle test. You want to take your motorcycle right. test, you might want to do that on a little bike, not your big right. Uh, Harley. Right. Or don't, a yeah, new driver, don't take your test in a four speed. No. Uh, man, no, no, yeah, no. Exactly. It's, uh, I'm sorry? We're having, it, we're having fun. Yeah, what is the last question? <laughs> what is the last question? What, what, is, what is the last question? Whatever you guys want it to be. <laughs> you guys have had a really good Yeah, we've covered a lot of stuff. Like, oh, you know what? Um, let's just hit, just review the, the, the scope of the facility because a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. Okay. We'll if, hit, you're, if you're comfortable, I'm not touching that. You're good. You go. To touch that, you go. But it just hit and miss when you're Yeah, done. yeah, I'm good. I'm um, good. I need to help the girls. They're, go, it's like go, go, go. cats for Mario, I think. So. Um. Yeah, I know. I'll let you go All right. pee. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Karen. Be good. Now we can talk about her. <laughs> so, uh, now can you just talk a little bit about the facility? Because, again, I didn't realize the scope of what you have here. So, you know, I'm thinking, again, so gun set. I went on Google and Google Images and looked. I'm going like, oh, okay, it's a range. No. <laughs> well, um I, I say this about coming to Gunsight, and it's not just the facilities. It's the whole environment. Hey, you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No, but I've seen it on TV. No, you know, need to go visit. Well, That's I've seen point. it at the theater. No, I've seen it at the IMAX theater. Yeah. And then you walk up there that first time, and there is all of God's grandeur in front of you mm -hmm. of the Grand Canyon. You need to come to Gunsight. Oh, I've been to a shooting range. Yeah. No, you need to come to Gunsight. No, I've been to a shooting school. And then you come to Gunsight, and as good as the videographers are, the bloggers, the writers, it's so challenging for them to understand we're a family here. Yeah. And that's what it is. We're 3,200 plus acres. We have 27 ranges. We can shoot from contact to 2,400 yards. We wow. have turning targets. We have robot targets that we can move through a crowd of people. When we do vehicle defense, we can move it through the vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's... We do pistol, rifle, carbine, shotgun in a defensive standpoint Right is, right is what we're teaching. We're teaching you to fight with the guns. We'll get some of the competitive shooters. So when the target faces, they can draw and they, they eat the X out of the circle, out of the target. But then we go into an indoor simulator where you're looking, got good guy targets, bad guy right. targets, doors, windows, furniture, and uh, they jump out and expose all of themselves. They, uh, they get all tuned up. And they miss. They shoot good guy targets. That's the difference because okay. that's what's going to happen when you reach into that secure it box right. at 2 a.m. and retrieve that firearm. And God forbid you do have to, to make an engagement there. You want to be the best you can be. So the the training you're talking about, I mean, we've, we've built a lot of simunition ranges for the military and these different types of, you know, video versus system. But this those, is live fire. But... This is also available to 
civilian. It's Absolutely. not just because most of these. Oh facilities, no, no. Yeah. Our bread and butter is is folks. Okay, so this we is, do a lot of military, a lot of yeah. law enforcement, but our vast majority of clients is I call them Earth people. Right, it is Earth people. And and if this sounds disparaging about law enforcement, I spent thirty five years. Mm-hmm. I earned my right to say it. <laughs> the training you get here is better oh, than ninety five percent of the cops get, and some of that has to do with budgets. And some of it has to do with poor leadership. Yeah. Um, some of it has to do with, well, Sheriff, we're going to cut your, your ammunition budget. Right. Really? Um, county attorney, would you please explain to them what the retainer fee will be, just the retainer fee for the next shooting we're in? Do you really want to cut my ammunition budget? Because if, we, if, if you as a citizen or that deputy right. or police officer needs to go to guns, I'll show my age. You got to be Hank Aaron stepping up to the plate. Right, right. Um, that's what you've got to be. You got to be Larry Bird. You got to be Rick Mount. You, you, that's who you got to be. And the training we offer here, without fail, is world class. I've got to come out. To, I've I've been through some training where you go to the 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 final drill is good guy bad guy. I went through it and I was like Tom, how'd you think it did? I said, I, I couldn't believe how well I shot. He goes. You killed two good guys. <laughs> because what's beyond your target? Yeah. Because when you when you don't go through that training, you're unaware. Because you know, again, everybody, I don't care who you are, first time you tunnel vision out, and you get so focused on just one thing, you lose the full picture. Absolutely. But you do that very quickly. You know, my ego's in tatters, but very quickly I learn, and all of a sudden it's like next time through you're but, just like. But the more oh. you the more you bleed in training, yep, the less you bleed on the street. Oh, you get some stress point. inoculation. Yep. Uh, so when when the tornado siren goes off, it's not oh my god, what do we do? What do we do? Is I have a plan. Right. We That's practice we our. Yeah. You have a fire drill plan. You have a you have a earthquake drill, mm-hmm. depending on where you are. Nowadays, you really need to have a, a home invasion or a work and you know right. active shooter plan yep. as well. So when, not if, it happens, it's not ah, uh, it's we know what to do. We know what to do. Yeah. Well, Ken, we've covered a lot of top, a lot of stuff today. I really, again, thank you so much for opening up Gunsight to the secured event. You know, working with us. Um, this is our first fire event. Your first, uh, first fir- one no, here. A first one here, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to coming back. I love coming out to the West. I, uh, I'm trying to get my wife. You know, we're eventually we're going to move out of the People's Republic of New York. And I would love to be out west. I'm going to battle with her on that. I I just built a new house right here behind Gunsight. I've got a really nice townhome for sale in in Prescott. So we can talk after this is over. It's a a cute little city. Is it a city? Is it a town? It's it's a a city. It's about 43,000. But, again, I look at it as an old cop. There's there's no gang graffiti, which is a really good sign. It's just just a good community. But the southwest is beautiful. I came from the Midwest. Um, Yes, it's hot. But the humid, they think it's humid here when it hits 20%. Yeah. You want to say that where you live? No, no. It's, <laughs> no, but again, I've, I've lived in Southern California. Dry heat is different as yeah. long as you're hydrated. Yes, I've, absolutely. I can, I, can, I can be outdoors in 100-degree weather if I've got the clothing for it and water. Right. It's, you work. So, absolutely. Kenny, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. And, uh, I, I, got, I got one last thing because yeah. I, I say at the close of all okay. of my different videos, you, know, you come to the gun. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching.